Bye. Welcome to the Basquatch Hunter, fish out of water. Fish on! We share our love for fishing with our guests, and then we show off what they do, making us both a fish out of water. A Basquatch isn't just a big fish, it's an elusive adventure you have yet to take. In this show, we all chased our dreams, but now we will chase our Basquatch. You're watching the Basquatch Hunter, fish out of water. What do these animals have to do with fishing, you might ask? Well, I can't wait to show you in this episode. We're going to have a lot of fun with our friends from the Detroit Zoological Society out fishing today. Then we're going to head into their world and have some fun with a very unique animal. An episode that you do not want to miss, so stay tuned for a whole lot of fun. Hey guys, it's Mike McKinstry, host of the Basquatch Hunter Fish Out of Water. And I'm Lindsay from the Detroit Zoological Society and I work with penguins. So this is uh, Lindsay's first time in a fishing kayak, first time fishing as an adult. So we're going back to the basics, doing worm and bobber fishing. We're gonna get every species in this lake, but targeting panfish, bluegill, sunfish, all the fun ones. And I think we're gonna get Lindsay on her first fish that she's gonna hold that's alive too. Yeah. Are you a little scared about that? Yeah, live fish, I don't know about them. I haven't been fishing in years, so I'm a little nervous to go out on the kayak today but I'm sure it's gonna be a lot of fun. So after this, we get to be in her world where I get to be a fish out of water, and I get to deal with some penguins that I'm kinda of nervous to be around, and do you think I'm gonna do okay with that? I think you'll be fine. Okay, we'll see if I get attacked <laughs> by penguins or how that goes. A lot of first and a lot of fun, but stay tuned, guys, because after the fishing, I wanna be a little fish out of water in her world to play with some penguins, so a lot of fun, stay tuned. We take people out fishing that aren't fishermen. Maybe they're professional athletes or they're industry professionals. But either way, they follow their dreams and doing what they love just like I do. We show off their adventure that people don't usually get to show or talk about, and we reveal that on camera, just like finding the Sasquatch for the first time. But at the end of the day, it's all about chasing your big adventure and sharing it with everybody to hopefully inspire you to do the same thing. Today I have Lindsay in the Feel Free Mokin 10 pedal drive. Now this kayak's 35 inches wide, so it's a little bit wider than the other kayaks that I have. So it'll give a little more comfort, more stability. I think she'll have a great time. I just started pedaling and it's just like riding a bike. I'm excited to get out there and catch some fish. So grab your fishing rod. Okay. Today we're using FX Custom Rod Carbon Series, and these are the new Carbon Series they just came out with. They retail like 109 bucks. They're good for everyone to use. Take your index finger, hold the fishing line up, and then you can open this. In the past, I've always used a push button rail, so this is gonna be an interesting journey for me. I hope I don't mess it up. So then when you go to cast, you just swing the bobber out and then close the reel. Okay? okay. So go ahead and try it. Just like fling that out, just like go your index finger. There you go. And then close the reel. There you go. Pretty easy, right? Yeah. So now the fun part, it's called setting the hook. Bobber fishing is all about timing. As soon as that bobber goes down, you gotta do a little pull back so you can set the hook in the mouth. Bluegill don't bite, they inhale. That's how you see bites when the bobber go down. Okay. So when that bobber goes down, you give it a little pop, you put it right on top of their mouth, and then you'll see the bobber start swimming. You get a nice secure hook set, and that's fish on. All right, let me get some worms <laughs> out. DMF Bait Company has been in Michigan since they started in the 70s. Oh, that's cool. And they're the largest uh, worm distributor in the entire country. So we're gonna do just a big enough piece of worm here to fit in the fish's mouth. Did that just gross you out? Yeah, <laughs> poor worm. From what I've been told, they like to be part of the ecosystem here, so okay. that's what I've been told. Okay, um, by the worms? So, yeah, the worms told me. Okay, yep. cool. A lot of these bluegill and sunfish like to hide out right where the edge of the weed line is, right where the vegetation comes up. So we're gonna move forward up there where it's a little bit deeper, where you get some fish. Okay, All right, let's, let's go. do this. Keep your lines in the water. We'll be right back. The Basquatch Hunter Fish Out of Water is brought to you by Amerigas Propane, Yak Attack, DMF Bait Co., FX Custom Rods, Feel Free Kayaks, Zotford and Deals in the D.com, Berkeley Fishing, Abu Garcia, produced by Basquatch Productions. Mike just showed me how to use the rod, and now comes the patience part. Perfect. And close the <laughs> reel. All right, watch that bobber. Do you feel pretty out of your element right now? 
since yeah. it's, not, it's not refrigerated out here. <laughs> yeah, it's a little warm. <laughs> All right, reel it in, we'll try again. So you're aiming right here for the edge of those lily pads. There you go, that's perfect. All right. This is the part where they call fishing instead of catching, where you're just waiting. So when you see those little bites, Oops. pull back a little bit. And if you feel it pull back again, then you have a fish on. I see you. Well, oh, oh, that well. was too hard. <laughs> yep, put it right back right there. As I'm fighting this fish, I'm hoping it stays on. Lindsay got her casting down, put it in a perfect spot. Her rod tip went straight down. I think she's got a big fish on. There you go, you got him. Yay! You are strong. There we go, fish on. Look at that, that's a beautiful bluegill. Ooh, hello. Uh, I know your rule, you don't like to touch them. I'll touch it. You don't want to get poked, so you start your hand right here, okay. and you slide the fins down, hold it firm in case they kick. Okay. Okay, you ready? Sure. All right, so slide your hand down. There you go. Look Hi. at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, sweetheart. Oh, he's fine. These are like the hardiest fish in the world. Hi, buddy. Don't do that again, please. <laughs> does it feel like a, just like a dead fish does to you? Yeah, <laughs> basically, yeah. It's just not looking back at me usually. <laughs> All right, let's throw them in. Let's get some All more. Right. Lindsay got her first fish. I need to get a fish now. So I'm trying to catch up here and make it one to one with the fish counts, and then. Hello. Lindsay catches the second one, so now it's two nothing, Lindsay. Look at that little guy. I'll come over to you. So okay. grab the top of the hook first. That way it can't spin around and hook you. Okay. And then slide your hand down. <laughs> you just gotta commit to it. All right. Look at that. I got it. You unhook your first fish yeah. by yourself. One of the best rewards out of everything I do with my job is seeing someone light up and get excited about something I'm so passionate about. I got another one that's two for me and Mike is still looking for his first. All right, bye-bye. After a few casts, I look over and Mike finally has one. All right, well, fish on, that wasn't expected. So I was trying to put a worm on her hook and my line was on top of the water just sitting there. This beautiful little bluegill right here just jumped on and wanted the worm really bad. My first fish of the day and it was very unexpected. Not as big as your first one. I don't think I'm gonna beat that one today. So now that these bluegill are getting a little feisty and they're starting to feed a lot, what it's gonna do is gonna attract all the predator fish, like the bass, the pike. We might get lucky and get some bass over here or at least some of the bigger bluegill will start coming through. There it is. Oh, it's a big fish too. Oh no, I'm tangled, I'm tangled. Oh my gosh. As soon as I hooked this fish, I knew I was on for a huge fight here but it swam to the left, it swam to the right, it tangled around my other rod because I didn't pull out of the rod holder. I really hope I don't lose this fish before I see what it is. Oh my God, my heart's racing. I don't know what it is. Oh my God, it's a monster northern pike. Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. That is a huge northern pike. Look at the size of that pike. Man, I'm like out of breath from that. This fish fought so hard, my rod bent straight down. I cannot believe I caught a pike this big while we're pan fishing. Congrats on that huge pike, Mike, but I still got the first fish. After Mike caught that large pike, we caught a few more bluegill, and something unexpected happened. He caught a bass. Here we go, fish on. That's a baby bass. Look at that. This is the smallest largemouth bass I've probably ever caught. Every species eats worms, so we caught a bass. Why not? We got this little largemouth bass. That rounds off our three species we've gotten today. Not a bad fish at all, though. Definitely really cute. So, Lindsay, how's this different from your normal day to day? Like, what would you <laughs> normally be doing right now if you were at work? Well, right now, I would be getting ready to do our afternoon duties, like putting out enrichment for the birds. Fishing is a nice relaxing day out on the water, but it's a little different at the zoo. It's go, go, go all the time. I cannot wait to go see what you do day to day. And I know it sounds hectic what you do and busy, but I think it's gonna be amazing to watch. It's gonna be fun. I hope you enjoy yourself. Well, we had a great time on the water. Lindsay outfished me with numbers, but that big pike put me over the edge for the largest fish, which is how I got the name the Basquatch Hunter to begin with. But now I get to be a fish out of water in her world, and I have no idea what to do around penguins. I have no idea how they're gonna react. I hope they don't attack me. I hope I don't slip and fall on the ice and get hurt. I just hope that everything goes really smooth and I do as good in her world as she did in mine. So get ready, we're going to the zoo. We'll be right back with more outdoor adventure.
Hi, I'm Mike Murray, the Vice President of Life Sciences with the Detroit Zoological Society. And today we're here at the Polk Penguin Conservation Center at the Detroit Zoo. This is a 125 acre campus with over 200 animal species representing over 2,000 individual animals that call this zoo home. The Detroit Zoo is accredited by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, and what that means is that we partner with around 230 other zoos and aquariums around the world. Those accreditation standards mean that we have the highest standards of animal well-being, animal health, and conservation efforts. The Polk Penguin Conservation Center is a really special place to us. It's more than a home for penguins here in Detroit. We are celebrating and saving penguins in the wild. We have long been working with penguins in the Falkland Islands in the Southern Hemisphere, studying their biology, their ecology, and how they're interacting with a changing climate. And so this place is not just for these penguins here, but visitors to the center are helping the Detroit Zoological Society save penguins in the wild. So we had an awesome time fishing. Thank you so much for coming out. I'm glad you got to hold and touch a live fish. But now we're in your world here. What are we getting into today? Today we have to go in and take care of the penguins, but my first duty is opening up the building and waking them up. Today I get to be a penguin keeper for the day. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. All right, let's go inside, guys. All right. It was perfect because as soon as we opened that first curtain, we had so many kings lined up. They were just ready and waiting for us to come in. Look at the penguins. They're ready to see us. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. What's the next step? What so we, we get to go turn on the effects. We have a wave machine. In the wild, they would be swimming through currents and the water would always be moving. So we okay. like to mimic that. We turn on the wave machine to simulate the natural movement in their natural habitat, so these penguins feel right at home. So how big is this pool? The pool is 326,000 gallons, and then the Thousand? deepest point, yep, Jeez. deepest point is about 25 feet deep. Wow, this is huge. When we were designing the Polk Penguin Conservation Center, we were really thinking about their natural habitat and the types of substrates they would be on while they were nesting in the wild. So what's our next step now? Everything's opened up, the waves are turned on. Yep, we what's... have to go get their food ready for the day. We get to play with fish. Yeah, Finally, play with something fish. I'm familiar something with. Something you know. Yes, all right, let's go. <laughs> all right. It's amazing to me that running your hand to all these dead fish doesn't gross you out, but touching a live bluegill gross you out in the kayaks. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, these, are, these aren't moving to freak me out. Okay, yeah. so what are we doing with all these, these dead fish? All right, so we have to get their vitamins ready. Every penguin gets a vitamin each day just to supplement what they need. I don't think vitamins are going to save these fish. No, they're not going to save the fish, <laughs> but they will help our penguins okay, stay perfect. healthy. Because the fish that we're using is frozen, we lose some of the important nutrients. So we supplement that with a multivitamin. So what we'll do is we'll prep the fish for the crested penguins. Those are the macaronis and the rock hoppers. Okay. So you just take a fish, take one of these vitamins, bend it back, and just stuff it right down into the body and then put it in the pan. And each one of these? Each one gets one vitamin. These fish feel disgusting. I thought having a fisherman come into my world would be a little difficult because we deal with dead fish and it's a completely different experience than going out and catching live fish. So weird how I feel terrible stuffing a fish in with pills, but yeah. it's weird. Just, it's for the penguins. It's for the penguins. Because we keep our habitat at 43 degrees, we have to wear some special equipment. So Mike's gonna get his boots on, his snow pants, and a nice comfy sweatshirt. And then just in case he falls in our big pool, he's gotta wear his life vest. Well, I'm used to wearing life jackets and being around fish, but I've never really wore a life jacket with snow gear and walking into a penguin habitat. So this is completely new to me. I'm really excited to see this. Stay tuned. Now comes the fun part. I'm gonna put Mike to work. He needs to shovel all the snow and scrub all the mats, and then he has to rinse all of that lovely fecal matter away down the drain. So we need our shovel. All right. 
scrub brush. Got it. And a hose. You got the hose? Yep. All right. So first step is the shoveling? Yep. Okay. Is and you just want to kind of go slow because the birds are all still here. Nice and gentle, not scare them? Yep. And just throw it right in? Mm -hmm. Just throw it right in. Try not to hit a bird in the pool. You know, I'm over here working really hard in my working clothes and they're wearing their tuxedos over here. Yeah. Looking all fancy, just watching me work. Is this guy like the foreman just watching me work? He's like keeping an eye on what I'm doing? He's the supervisor. This is a lot of work. You're not done yet. Oh, we get to enjoy the penguins as guests at the zoo, but seeing all the work that goes into this to make it clean and make these penguins healthy and happy, it's pretty incredible. I got an iceberg for you. <laughs> I'd have way too much fun doing this. I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to work here. Mike did a pretty good job, but if he came to work with us, it might take a little longer to clean because he just kept getting distracted by all the birds. What are you doing? Can't you see I'm working here? <laughs> Are you just walking by? Go ahead. Go on, beep, beep. Look how big this one is. Oh, that's Arthur. That's a big penguin. He's a big penguin. He's one of our kings that are on a diet. Oh yeah, I can tell. <laughs> well, how did I do cleaning? You did a pretty good job. Did I do as good as you did fishing? Probably. Okay, I think so. <laughs> so what's the, what's the next step? All right, well now we have to feed these guys because they're probably pretty hungry. So is there anything to worry about? Do I have to risk like, them biting me or like, No. they want the food, right? I was gonna say, you're bringing the food, you're gonna be your, their favorite thing right now. Now it's time to feed these birds and this is the part I've been looking forward to the whole time because how many times in your lifetime do you get to say that I hand fed penguins? All right, let's do it. All right, let's go grab some fish. So these penguins obviously know there's food here. Yes, they do. And they're very eager to come over here right now because I'm kind of nervous, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm being swarmed. I'll show you how to feed them. Okay. So we are feeding them capelin. This is their favorite type of fish. You just want to hold <laughs> the fish so it's pointed head first. You don't want it to be too floppy. So I usually hold like mid body. Okay. So this is the first time in my life I've ever fed a penguin. And I can't imagine this is. If they don't take it the first time, just try again. Is it too big? No. Some of them are picky. No, no one wants my fish? Everyone wanted fish until I started feeding. Take my fish. <laughs> Take my fish. One big misconception is that Penguins will just take the fish right out of your hand. There's a learning curve here, and Mike really needs to learn how to feed these birds. Because he doesn't like it being fed that way. Well, I, I know, you don't know. That, these are the little quirks about the penguins that we learn by working with them for so long. I think I need a little bit more training because I'm having a really hard time feeding these penguins. This is like the hardest part. Can I go back to cleaning their poop again? <laughs> I'm afraid and it's gonna so it's hit not, me with his beak. You'll be fine. There you go. Okay, that one bit me and it didn't hurt. There you go. There we go, okay. All right, I think I'm getting the hang of that. So every day we actually sit down and hand feed them and we have a chart that we'll put those numbers on so we can track how much they're eating every day. Here. Well, I'm definitely a fan of catching fish, but now I'm an even bigger fan of feeding penguins fish when they decide to eat. This is incredible. Now that we've gotten our chores done, it's time to have some more fun. Let's get these penguins swimming in the pool and having a good time. You can tell these penguins have a lot of fun fishing, just like I do. I 
had a great day showing Mike what I do for my job, and I had an amazing time fishing with him. So now I have to go finish up my job, and I'll see you guys next time you come to the zoo. I still cannot believe that I get to say that I touched penguins, I fed penguins, I got to film them underwater. I had such a great time here. Huge thank you to Lindsay, to everybody at the Detroit Zoological Society for pulling the curtain back a little bit and showing me what really goes into their passion for taking care of animals and conservation efforts. Make sure you guys check out your local zoos too, and don't be afraid to ask some questions and learn just like I did. It was great to have the crew here today as we celebrate penguins. We hope that everyone learned a little bit about not only what we do here at the zoo, but the conservation work that we do around the world. In the next episode. Today, they're filming out of the new Boca e-boat from Boca Marine. We're gonna hit the factory, see how the Boca boats are made, and then go catch some fish out of them. Definitely a comfortable way to fish, for sure. I could get used to this. Now we just need to catch a fish. <laughs> Don't miss the Basquatch Hunter, fish out of water, on the Discovery Channel, the Pursuit Channel, and online everywhere. BasquatchHunter.com